Michael Winograd on clarinet. On the fiddle. And the original spelling is banjo. Uh, just so you know the provenance of this instrument. This is a very, this is a very straight ahead session we'd like to do now. We're just going to play tunes. Do you have questions? Anything you've always wondered? What do klezmer bands do when they're not creating great art? We can't tell. We're always creating. Uh, so if you have any questions, we will be happy to take them. Otherwise, we'll just play some tunes. Or we'll do both. Any questions? Uh, questions? Oh, okay. sir, I'd like to introduce Mr. Bill Maloney. May I, 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 may I tell you how important this is to me? Thank you. Bill Malone is my model for someone who understands traditional music. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Was that your question? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who do you think I am? <laughs> no, I my comment on, on banjo and this kind of music. Is any idea about when it moved into uh, European... Uh, Ensemble music? Uh, Actually, it's a, it's a ter terrific question. Thank you very much for asking that, Bill. The banjo is um, representative of, of issues of acculturation and adaption. Uh, the banjo, of course, is an African instrument. Uh, by the time Jews emigrated to the United States, at the end of the uh, East European Jews emigrated to the United States at the end of the 19th century. The banjo had been a, an integral part of American cultural literacy through minstrel shows uh, throughout most of the 19th century. By the early 20th century, when uh, the Klezmer ensembles uh, around World War I started recording, the banjo was a symbol of Americanization. It was a symbol of modernity. Mostly importantly, it was a standard instrument on dance band uh, dance uh, dance bands. So the banjo reflected two things: it reflected issues of modernity, but it also uh, reflected a way of finding out how you can adapt local dominant culture and incorporate it into a cultural continuity of, of Yiddish music. The, the tenor banjo, much the same way as the slide trombone or the saxophone, were, were instruments that were integral to jazz and dance band uh, bandstands from World War I on. So this was primarily uh, an American innovation and very quickly became part of the lexicon of Jewish musicians who were playing. That was until the banjo was replaced later by the guitar on American bandstands. But for a very short time in the 1920s, uh, Jewish ensembles were using the tenor banjo. <coughs> and those around that? Uh, there were banjos in, uh, and again, the banjo, and I don't want to go off on yet another of my favorite subjects. <laughs> We could be doing banjo history here, and you would never see your family. <laughs> I guarantee that. Um, but uh, we're talking more about an American phenomenon. Most Jewish recordings that were recorded in the United States were exported to Europe rather than recordings that were made in Europe exported to the United States. So the culture really worked kind of more one way. Yes. Uh, in